Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpachah, Mori, Medan, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael. I want to welcome you to another live broadcast of My Living Branch. Just getting myself logged in here so I can see all your uh, comments and chat in the chat group. <clears throat> so, want to uh, say, first of all, Shabbat Shalom. Appreciate all the prayers during the week, all the support. And we are just um, trying to get closer and do the Father's will and execute his statutes, judgments, precepts, um, commandments, everything that he's instructed us. So, hallelujah. <clears throat> um, and Torah de Mori Kanan. He brought to my attention, he had texted me and let me uh, know I had the wrong date. I had next week. So uh, I'm trying to move too fast. So um, I had to change the date for the live stream. So we got all that straight. Now we in business. So before we get into the lesson, uh, I know a lot of people had expressed that they... Um, when I started to put out lessons on the calendar, many lessons, they wanted to be privy to it. So, I'm going to show you how to get to them. Just in case you may not know. Okay, so let's go over here. So, this is the website. This is, this is our website before you log in. Okay. The way the website is set up, there is a channel called New Channels Ancient Calendar. Now, if you click on this, you'll get nothing. It's because I restricted it for those that are members of the site. So, you have to log in. And so, when you log in... And tell me I don't know my own password. All right. All righty. So once you log into the site, if you come down, you will see an area that says new channels. So I'm hoping with uh, Dr. Borkins um, to get a health channel running. This is where she will put all of her health posts. So in order to um, get updates when a new lesson has been loaded, you press this and you come in and hit follow. Okay. And as you can see, there's a lesson right here. Now these lessons are not public lessons. So uh, unless you come here, you won't be able to access them because you won't have the address for where the lesson is. So in the first lesson, I deal with what well, common error, floating Shabbats, or floating Shabbat, and how you should view that and the perspective on that. Okay, so that should be a very easy, uh, easy um, fix for, for those that um, are willing to follow and get the understanding. Now, I also posted here. The this is just in case you haven't found it, studying the calendar, the series that's on YouTube by Maury Lamayahu with all the research that we did. Okay, then I would suggest if you have a moment, I want you to watch this geoengineering climate. And once you, if you see this, uh, it's going to, it's going to have an impact on your perspective. Even if you live off the grid, grow your own food, what they're doing, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to circumvent. So if you get a chance, I want you to watch this video and cause it's very educational. 
and it'll tell you stuff that they're doing that you weren't not aware of and uh, it was like an eye opener for me okay so I think uh, that about covers it you know uh, make sure you go in here if you haven't logged in in a while make sure you log in to the channel because what we're going to do is implement a policy I haven't decided whether it's going to be a year or six months if you've been in inactive on the website um, for a period of time then you know what's the need of having an account the account is there for you to be active to interact with others you know to post things that will help others so if you um, and I haven't decided yet whether it's going to be six months or a year. If you have any suggestions, uh, you can email me. I'm always open to suggestions. All righty. So let's get over here to this lesson. And this lesson is going to be very, very, very important. And I'm not sure that whether there's going to be a part two or not. I just wanted to cover the basics. And I want to deal with the subject of assumptions. And I wasn't exactly sure what to call it this morning. But um, uh, Father woke me up at 3. And gave me the rest of it. Uh, assumptions. The fuel of hell. Then I began to think about why he wanted me to call it that. And then it clicked. So I'll explain that to you after we pray. All right, let's get ready and pray. Now, you said you want to grow and you want to get closer. So this is going to be one of the things that you're going to have to battle and bring under control and get in subjection to Torah. All right, as we pray, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Eloheinu Malach HaAlam. Tell everybody, Father, for the lesson today. I pray, Father, this lesson will help our people grow and help them to have a firm foundation that, Father, we will not be tossed and driven on every wind and doctrine. We will have a sure foundation. For nevertheless, the foundation of Elohim, Elohim standeth sure. And we just ask you, Father, to... Give us wisdom, knowledge, memory, understanding, recall, fear of Elohim. All the things that we need, Father, to navigate and to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. We most of all ask for forgiveness of our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions. Father, they, they constantly try to stand in our way. We ask you, Father, to help us to overcome those things. To put them under subjection. And to deny ourselves and pick up our stake and follow Mashiach daily. Father, we acknowledge the sins of our forefathers. We know, Father, what they've done. We can see it in prophecy. We can see it in ourselves based on that we are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And everything you said would happen, happen. Your word is true. And we give you praise for your word. Now, Father, let your word be a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto our path that we, Father, may ward off the, the spirits, the, the forces of darkness that try to overtake us. Because we love this marvelous light. We love your word. We love doing your word. We do it with joy. In the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. <clears throat> so. So just like anything for this particular title, what, what the Father was showing me is that a fuel needs something or somebody, a mind, to ignite it. So assumptions is a fuel. And when you put this fuel on a, on a fire source <clears throat> or around heat that is 
too intense, it's going to cause a fire. It's going to cause problems. And many people do a lot of assuming. And we're going to talk about that. So, let's look at what an assumption is. And I, I want you to take note. Okay, let's talk about assumption now. And this is from dictionary.com. A thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen, notice the key word that I highlighted, without proof. No proof. And I want you to hold on to that because all assumptions are fueled by no proof. They have no proof. And you have to ask yourself, does the father work on assumptions? Does he work without having proof of something? An assumption is something that you assume to be the case, even without proof. For example, people might make the assumption that you are a nerd if you wear glasses, even though that's not true or very nice okay so they create a story in their mind and we're going to get into what fuels assumptions because I'm sure at some point we've all been guilty of making assumptions and depending on the scenario assumptions can be the worst thing that you can do okay as a verb um, supposed to be the case without proof. It is reasonable to assume that such changes have significant social social effects. That's just an example. So people make, say stuff, project thoughts, um, have attitudes based on something without proof. And I'll keep coming back to that. No proof. No external proof. Okay, now let's talk about proof. As a now, evidence sufficient to establish a thing true or to produce belief in its truth. Okay, now I thought it very interesting because I wanted to bring this verse up from Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Elohim so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear so hypostasis is the Greek word for evidence and notice a setting support okay now if you go to the root word of uh, oh, excuse me if you uh, now I have them backwards substance is setting under support okay then the word evidence is elachos which means proof or conviction so evidence proof okay and what does assumptions work on Assumption has no proof. So it's the exact opposite of what faith is. Because faith operates on proof. Because when I walk out, I see all the evidence, all the supporting factors of creation and what Elohim put in motion. How wondrous are his works. 
I see the evidence through prophecy that when you don't keep his commandments, what happens to you as a nation? You're scattered. He kicked you out the land. All these things he told us. And it came to pass. So when we when it comes to assumptions and faith, they're exact opposites. One has no proof. One is built on the support of proof. Okay, so let's keep going. So look, let's look at proof origin. Okay, so we were talking about faith. And we saw what faith has in it. So Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim. So what is the word of Elohim? Luke 24, verse 27. And beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning him. Okay, now this is talking about Mashiach. So if he's talking, if he's calling something scriptures, he has to be talking about something older than the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah because the Brit Hadashah was not written at that time. Okay, it was still being played out. So the Brit Hadashah is a, a, a great witness to scripture, but it's not scripture. Many people make that mistake. Now let's see what he calls scripture or what's called scripture. Luke 24 verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So there you have it. Okay. The laws of Moses, the Torah the prophets, and the Psalms of the writings. Okay, now look what Mashiach told them in John 5, 39. Search the scriptures. Now, notice he didn't say search the New Testament. He said search the scriptures. We're talking about proof. For in them, you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So when you look back through the Tanakh or the Old Testament, as commonly called, you see proof after proof of Mashiach. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So here we have another reference to scriptures. And finally, uh, Acts 17, verse 2. And Shaul or Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them three Sabbath days, reasoned with them out of the scripture. And note that he, he didn't reason with them out of Romans, out of Luke, out of Matthew, out of Ephesians, out of Corinthians. He reasoned with them out of the scriptures, the Tanakh. That's your proof. Okay, so. Let's look at this. What are assumptions based on? Don't worry, it's, it's going to get hot here in a minute. Y'all might be saying, be saying that song, it's getting hot in here. Just hold on a sec. Now, I want you to notice the language. I started back with verse 1 in Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my Torah law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Emphasis here is on his commandments. Because what will his commandments do for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you or thee? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. So this, this thing, you know, because 
what you see in Torah, you see mercy, you see truth. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to bind it around your neck. Write it on the tables of your heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of Elohim and man. Now here's the key. Trust in Yahuwah with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Now, I put over here in the picture, because a lot of people are leaning against this wall called your understanding. And this is where all these assumptions and stuff are generated without proof. I see it. So some people, you know, say so many things but have no proof no evidence nothing to support it something that they've concocted in their mind so let's look a little deep okay specifically verse 5 trust in Yahuwah with all thy heart lean not unto Thy own understanding. Binah. Okay, understanding, knowledge, meaning perfectly, understanding, wisdom. So let's look at the root word, which is being. Okay, to separate mentally. Be cunning. Discern, eloquent, feel, have intellect, think. Now, he's not talking about Yahuwah's understanding, but this is stuff that comes from you. Your discernment, your intellect, your feelings, your thoughts. Okay, this is all strictly you. There is no scripture involved in your understanding this is stories you come up with this is things that you create without proof okay so it is separate mentally so it's something you're doing in your mind you, you're you're going over and over in your mind, thinking about this, creating this story. You know, you're dwelling on it. You know, there's no Torah involved in the thought process to bring some order to the thought, to bring some righteousness to the thinking. But everything is you just separating. You keep dividing. You keep going over and over and over. And trying to figure things out. When the Father has given us a process. To figure things out. So you don't have to make an assumption. To come to your own truth. Without proof. Because that's not how the Father works. But that's how a lot of folks work. And I've seen it in action. But we're gonna get we're gonna get there. Now, I want you to see what, what the father says. And we've covered this before in Isaiah. Because if you think your thoughts and understanding is like his, you're dead wrong. It's not. And unless you have his Torah as the resource in the fueling filter and fire. It's your understanding. Okay, Isaiah 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways. Neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahuwah. For as the heavens are high, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts.
Vast different. Isaiah 65 verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walk in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. After their own thoughts, their own understanding. So he gave us an instruction to trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. So every rule that he's laid out, we're supposed to trust in it. We can't lean to our own understanding, our own thoughts for guidance when he's given us guidance. But, but you see it happen all the time. They're on that wall of their understanding. Hey, Jeremiah 6, verse 19. Heal, o earth, and behold, I will bring an evil upon this people. Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my Torah, but rejected it. So they chose their own thoughts over Torah, over his word. All to be pleasing to themselves. And we're going we're gonna to get more into that. Here in a little bit. Okay Psalms 10 verse 4. The wicked. Through the pride of his count, countenance. Will not seek after Elohim. Elohim is not in all his thoughts. That's talking about the wicked. Okay, we, get, we got a few more. Psalms 119 verse uh, 113. Samach. I hate vain thoughts, but thy Torah law do I love. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Commit thy works unto Yahuwah, and thy thoughts shall be established. Okay. Here's the creation. Assumption create. This is what, uh, when you assume something, this is what it creates. Isaiah 59 verse 7. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. <clears throat> you can guarantee I'm getting out the way. Because... Uh, this is what you see. What an assumption does without proof. So you got to ask yourself, what is fueling the assumption fire? Okay. Assumption is actually the fuel, but it's causing a fire. And this your understanding, which is your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. We're not talking about having any Torah attachment because Torah brings all those things into obedience if you will follow Torah. But here is the case in point. People don't want to follow Torah. They minimize it to save their own or to preserve their own understanding, to preserve their thoughts, to preserve their feelings, to preserve their emotions. But Torah has nothing to do with preserving any of that. Torah is about preserving what the Father has said. And this is one of the problems that, that you'll see amongst people when it comes to getting things in order. When you hear people start to, um, you know, when, when you have a problem and you're trying to get it rectified, you'll notice immediately. First thing they'll do, they go into their thoughts, their feelings their emotions 
That's why when you when you're trying to judge righteously, you need someone that's unattached, that has no thought, feeling, or emotional attachment to the situation, and that's what the judge and the priest were supposed to be in scripture. They had no attachment to the situation. So whatever they brought was, you know, strictly from Torah. They had no friends. Okay, yeah, I might know you, but when it comes to judgment, no friends. I'm not here to be your friend today. I'm here to cause the Father's word to, to stand straight and to have a cause and to bring order. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to shield you. I'm not here to pacify you. See, these are all the things people want. I'm not here to make you look good. It is what it is. What the proof is. Or the evidence brings out is what it is. But people get all into their thoughts, their feelings and emotions. And what they do, they make Torah of non-effect. How it's supposed to be done is weed it right out. Based on those fact, these factors right here. Now, and I've seen it happen many times. Okay, let's keep going. Now, I want you to read this righteous judgment. Okay, Deuteronomy 19, verse 15. And I want you to read this with understanding. What does it say? One witness. Did you hear that? One witness shall not rise up against a man for an iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he has sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. If a false witness, okay, what is a false witness? They don't have proof. They, they um, twist the evidence. They twist the support. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him, that which is wrong, then both the man between whom the controversy is shall stand before Yahuwah, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judge shall make diligent inquisition. Okay. It's not just, I'm going to listen to your feelings and emotions. I'm going to be inquiring. I'm going to ask difficult questions. I'm going to dig deep. I'm going to be looking for other witnesses. You know, to, to, properly survey what's what's being brought it's just not one person telling me and then oh man it must be so no that's not how it works and behold if the witness be a false witness and i've seen those before i've seen where people uh birds of a feather flock together and they all get on the same team and, and try to and, and try to pervert justice or his judgment? Oh man, I've, it's off the chain. And has testified falsely against his brother. Then shall you do unto him as he thought to have done unto his brother. So shall thou put the evil away. And this is the whole thing from among you. See, we skirt things, but we forget the evil keeps, you know why the evil keeps resurfacing? Because we didn't put it away. We didn't allow righteous judgment to truly go forth. And those which remain shall hear 
and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you and thy eyes shall have and, and thy eyes shall not pity but uh, life shall go on for life eye for an eye two for teeth hand for a hand foot for a foot now I made this chart out for you because I want you to want you to see this okay you got your accuser and th this I didn't even at first I had put victim there I said that that's not a good word because not every accuser is right not every person that makes a claim is a victim so I put accuser now notice your accuser is not a witness but I've seen so many instances where the accuser try to make themselves the witness and they're the sole witness. Is this how it works? No, it's not. Okay, now if the accuser has one witness, guess what? There's still no ruling. Because it says at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So you have to have two or three witnesses to establish the matter. And those witnesses should be, <laughs> notice I say should be, because, I, I, you know, it, it's, it'd be some crazy stuff happening. Those witnesses should have directly heard or seen. Okay, now what's not a witness? Somebody said. Okay, where's the witness? Their presence is required. You can't get somewhere and say so and so said. Well, if if so and so said, so and so should be here. Okay, I can't go on third party. Somebody said, the person should hear or seen personally, not third party. And you'll see a lot of that. Okay. You will see a lot of assumptions that are fueled by feelings, emotions, thoughts, reasoning, knowledge. It sounds good. No proof. I felt. I thought. Or they, they'll reason through, well, this is why I came to that conclusion. But no solid proof of anything. Assumption. So I'm hoping you can see when you throw this fuel of assumption on judgment, it can, it can come out to be messy. Or I heard. Or you have the accuser only. You know, oh, you told so-and-so. Well, where's so-and-so at to validate that I told so-and-so? Okay, and, and conveniently, so-and-so is not available. I, I'm, try, I'm trying to tell you how things roll. And how we got to strive to do things. Because when we allow these things to take over judgment, which are not witnesses, we're actually, we, we, we're not gaining any traction. And, and you can guarantee you're going to see it come again. Just It might come a different way, but it's coming again. Okay, now this is how we gloss over judgment okay we don't do diligent inquisitions okay people asking for forgiveness without without resolving the matter trying to save face but see what that does 
it allows the root of the matter to remain in place because sometimes people act as strategists they go do things so that this thing can't come full circle because if it comes full circle it should be dug up by the roots not just the branches trimmed and that's what most times is being done in judgment they trim off the branches and that's why this thing keep coming coming back so many times because we don't deal with the root of the matter we don't we don't get down in there and pull it up by the root you know we the root gets saved and next thing you know a couple of months a year down the road we right back at the same old thing so you know we 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 got to make sure and when people do things, they're not doing it to avoid digging in their soil where their roots are. Because that's what we're after. We want to get, so, so what did he say? So we could get out the evil from among Israel. That's what we're trying to do. So that this evil people will see, okay, these people are playing. You know, they get to the root of the matter and, and then execute judgment according to the scripture so that this thing does not surface again. So uh, allowing the roots of the problem to remain, only trimming the branches. Okay? And people tend to give they get forgetful, vague responses, vague answers. We've got to start getting to the root of these matters. If we don't, we will continue to see and have the same problems over and over and over again. Minimizing what has happened. glossing over the truth or skirting the real issues sometimes when you're doing judgment people try to divert it off of them so that you don't mess with the root of what's going on in them using assumptions as witnesses these are just a few of the things that, that I see and have seen happen You know, so what do we do? We've got to take a stand. Doesn't matter who the person is. It could be your best friend. It could be your spouse. Whatever the scripture calls for, that's what we got to do. And it's time to start doing that. Because I can guarantee you, we get in the wilderness and uh, people start, you know, acting up or, or want to act foolish and, and trying to subvert his justice. It's, it's going to be some rocks thrown. Because we, we can't play that. Ask Pincus. We ain't playing that. It's not time for that. So assumptions. When you talk and there's no evidence, everything is based on your feelings, your emotion, your understanding. Your reasoning, there's no proof. That's an assumption. And that fuel is the fuel of hell. You can take it for what it's worth. 
And if you've been dealing with assumptions, now is the time for you to get on board with how the Father does things. And how he operates in truth. And look at them laws burning. And every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. And assumptions is not a good fruit. Good fruit is faith, love, joy, peace. This is what you want. This is what the Father's after. So let's pray, Miss Paca. What my time looking like? Okay, doing good. Let me see if there's any comments before I pray. You know, some some might be like, okay, uh, what the world? Are we uh? Where this lesson come from? Well, this this lesson been brewing for a long time. Don't make assumptions. If you want to find out something, or you have, or you think your brother or sister has a problem with you, or something going on, go to the brother or sister. Ask them. Don't sit back. And let this thing build in your mind and you build in a case in your mind. Oh, they hate me or they don't like me or or whatever the case may be. Don't just assume that it's so. Get proof. Hear it from them. People don't want to do this. They would rather sit back and just let things ride. But you know what happens when it lets ride, you let it ride? The load keeps building and building and building. And before you know it, your fellowship is different. Then before you know it, you're not speaking. And it's all based on what? What proof do you have? Have you talked to the person? Have you asked the person? They might tell you, oh, it was nothing against you. I just was having a not so good day. Um, you know, you know, I was having uh, this going on or that going on. You know, forgive me. I, I, that was not meant for you to take like that. Okay, you don't know. But if you don't say anything, guess what? It builds and builds and builds. And next thing you know, here comes the enemy. Did you, did you see how they looked at you? Did you see how they didn't speak to you? There's been times where I've been in a, like a, a service format. And uh, someone would say, uh, come back later. Well, you didn't speak to me. I'm like, oh, forgive me. It what I did not. Uh, I was busy. My mind was somewhere else on the lesson. You know. But if they kept building, then see, then it seems like everything that you're doing, you're doing against them. It becomes personal after that, and and you you're not even doing anything against them. But they're working on these assumptions, and that's that's the fuel. And then a situation comes along, poof, shoo, and now the fuel is ignited and it's burning everything. Assumptions. You don't have to assume. You can go to your brother. You can go to your sister. Then if they don't hear you, take a witness with you. Take witnesses with you. Go to them. Then after that, they come before the assembly. 
if you can't get it resolved on your level, then with the witnesses, now we at assembly level to get it resolved. But it all has to start somewhere. It starts with you and that person. Okay? And, and ladies, you've got to be especially careful because you're a little more connected to your feelings and emotions and how your thought process works with other women. Because remember, you weren't made for another woman. You were made for man. You can't skirt that issue. So you were made for man. So there's a tendency for women to really clash. Because of your purpose. You weren't made for another woman. You were made for the man. All right, did I pray? Uh, let me pray. Because we don't want the fuel of assumption to pour on any of us. Stop assuming. All right, hallelujah. Father, I pray, Father, that you give us a hearing ear. Cause us to, to be compelled. To do what is righteous in your sight. To lean not to our own understanding. But the key is. To acknowledge you in all our ways. And you will direct our path. Thank you Father. Hallelujah for directing our path. We willingly submit to your Torah. Your instructions. All your judgments and commandments. Father now. Give us the heart guide us along this journey so that we can do things according to your will and not according to our thoughts. Father, we ask you for forgiveness if we have taken matters into our own hands and let it be fueled by our thoughts, which are our emotions, our feelings, our understanding. We ask you for forgiveness for that. And we turn back to your Torah. We lift it up as a beacon, as a light to the world that this is our wisdom. Father, thank you. We say Toda Rabbah to all of our Mishpachah. Father, and those that struggle with, with assumptions, help them that they lean not to their own understanding. But in all their ways, acknowledge you. And I pray, Father, that you direct their path. I give you praise, honor, and esteem through Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. I mean. All righty. Let's see here, Miss Baka. Okay. <clears throat> and if you know if you, know, you want to check out some books, you can always go to the Hebrew Foundation Resource Center. That's the address right down there at the bottom. Now, if you're looking for the Hebrew Ten Commandments and the Hebrew Passover story, which is a training tool to teach and train your children, you can find them. You can just Google them on eBay. Not eBay. Uh, excuse me. You can Google, Google them on Amazon. Go to Amazon, do a search. You'll find them there. Okay, and you can find them in paper and Kindle. And if you'd like to join our bookmark or witnessing team, please do. You can do that um, by going to our website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. Make sure you fill out your complete mailing address. And if you would like to support us, you can do so. Uh, you can go to the website. You can do so by Cash Out, PayPal. Uh, and uh, by mail and at some point we will we'll be putting on their digital assets because uh, in case you haven't figured out that's where everything is going alrighty Miss Picard I hope this lesson helped 
If others don't want to follow Tori, you do what's right. Keep your soul in line. Uh, don't work through assumptions because it's definitely the fuel of hell. And once it once it sets blaze, oh man, it, it goes crazy. It's like a wildfire that don't want to be put out. All right, Miss Bacow, we got a uh, immersion coming up here at the assembly at um, 12 noon. So she's asking uh, those in the local area if you want to come out, come check it out. The address is uh, up. It's on the website, so you can go check that out. They'll be meeting at the assembly at 12 and then going over to do the immersion. Okay, all righty, Miss Bacow, this has been a pleasure. It's been wonderful. This is uh, Moray Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom, and let's make this the best one ever.